UB Bulls fans who want to have a chance to either celebrate, vent, or just enjoy more UB Bulls football and to talk about the game that was, well, you're in the right place. Bullseye Nation, Buffalo Bulls postgame show. John Krupa is your host, and the postgame podcast is going to start right now. Good evening, everybody, and welcome into Bullseye Nation, the UB Bulls postgame show. How's everybody doing tonight? I got to imagine pretty good, right? Oh, what happened in the game? Oh, nothing much. Only a late come from behind, a late touchdown drive, giving UB the 24-20 victory in a huge win in the MAC East. They pull it off 24-20 over the Miami University of Ohio Redhawks. And uh, remember when we were sitting here 0 and 3 and just wondering, wow, you know, could this be a long season for the Bulls? Could they finish in last in the MAC? Yeah, me neither. I don't really remember that after these big two victories against these two MAC East rivals. They go into Eastern Michigan that had been on fire and beat them by a couple of scores, 50 to 31 last week. And now they follow it up with a 24 20 win over the Miami University of Ohio Red Hawks. And now, granted, Gabbert did not play in this game, the Red Hawks starting QB. He's been out since week one. But remember, this is the same Red Hawk team that last week went into Northwestern and won 17-14, had been playing pretty good football regardless, and the biggest threat. And now, UB owns the head-to-head tiebreaker and just so much to like from this game. Yes, UB did squander a couple of leads but Miami of Ohio came back to make it a game but in the end Miami of Ohio made a critical error on the final go-ahead touchdown drive UB was set to take the field goal to force overtime on a fourth and four and the Red Hawks jumped and that five-yard penalty Proved to be as costly as it would sound because on the very next play, Cole Snyder finding Marshall in the back of the end zone to the right corner wide open. And that was your ball game. UB winning 24-20 over the Red Hawks. And what a thrilling victory. You know, the Chicago Cubs have a song, Go Cubs Go. And they sing about the Cubs are going to win today. Well, you know what? With just what a thrilling win this was. They should be singing, Go Bulls Go. Go Bulls Go. Hey, you B, what do you say? The Bulls are going to win today. And, you know, when you've seen the way they've played the last two weeks, you definitely can see why they don't give up. They continue to stand up to big challenges. And despite suffering a couple heartbreaking losses early to Holy Cross in Coastal Carolina, they have picked up. They have found a way to lift themselves off the mat and get back into contention. And not only that, they are now in the driver's seat in the MAC East Division. They are 2 0, while Miami of Ohio drops to 2 3 overall as well. But they're 0 1 in conference play. Plus, you own the tiebreaker. So, in a way, you could almost say a two and a half game lead. But regardless, just a couple of huge wins. And now we'll see if UB can find a way to just continue to roll along. They have another Mac East game coming up next week at Bowling Green, taking on the Bowling Green State Falcons. And so that'll be another huge test. But we'll see if UB can pass that one. If you could find a way to get to 3 or 4 at all in the conference, you're really putting yourself in great position like UB is right now. So after this thrilling win, let's take a look at some stats of the game for you. Again, part of the Bullseye Nation postgame show, John Kruba taking you through it. And once again, for the fifth consecutive game, UB had more first downs than their opponent. They had 21 compared to just 16 for the Red Hawks. Four of 14 on third down was UB. Five of 14 were the Red Hawks. But more importantly, UB 2 for 2 on 4th down, Red Hawks all 1. And remember, one of those 4th down conversions for UB led to the touchdown. And I think if you want to talk about something that's encouraging in the coaching staff, that's where we see the growth of Maurice Lindquist as a head coach. You know, a couple weeks ago, I kind of 
admittedly got on him for a decision late in the game against Holy Cross where he had it inside the 40 of the opponent and didn't go for it. And that was one of the decisions that maybe cost the Bulls that game. While tonight, he was not scared. He was aggressive. He realized on fourth and goal, I get a chance after this big pick to get six. I'm going to go for it with my quarterback. And that decision paid off and then some for a touchdown. So give credit to Coach Lindquist. For being a little more aggressive, I think he is starting to come into his own as the UB Bulls head coach, and now you're starting to see the results on the field. However, one concerning thing for the Bulls, total yards in this game, definitely not in their favor. 359 yards of total offense for the Red Hawks, 278 for UB. In the passing game, UB, though, 188 to 119. Really, the difference was the running game in terms of the yardage discrepancy. 240 for Miami, 90 for UB. Remember, a big thing for the Red Hawks was that 76-yard touchdown scramble in the first quarter by the quarterback Smith. That was 76 yards. That makes some of the difference right there. But again, I'm sure, like we said Prior to the Eastern Michigan game, UB needs to get their running game getting going a little more consistently as they continue to face these good running backs in the MAC East. But one good thing, Mike Washington did have a two-yard touchdown run in today's win for the Bulls. Penalty yardage, 11 of 96 for Miami, but it was those five yards on the field goal, the offside, that absolutely did them in. For UB, just three flags for 36 yards. Now, one of them happened to be on the final drive where UB, they lost a player getting ejected for targeting, leading with the crowd of his helmet. So that was a 15-yarder. Prior to that, it had only been two penalties for 21 yards. But overall, for a team that the first couple weeks of the season, penalties were a massive problem. You have not seen that as of late. And so for the Bulls, good job cleaning up some of their discipline issues. And they're getting rewarded with victories. Turnovers in the game, two for UB, one for the Red Hawks. In time of possession, this is the first time in five games that UB did not have the ball longer than their opponent. Miami, Ohio Red Hawks control the ball 31 minutes and 47 seconds compared to 27 minutes, 53 seconds for UB. And before we get into the highlights of the game, a shout out to the UB Bulls fans that came out tonight. I was in the stadium. Atmosphere absolutely electric. You guys once again came out, you know, due to the non-conference schedule, instead of six home games this year, we only get five so you have to bring it every single time. And once again, you guys did that in full force. UB Bulls fans, you should be proud because, again, you can tell this team feeds off the momentum that this crowd gives them. And that atmosphere, absolutely electric, even after the game, seeing everybody high-fiving, just a great, great night here at UB Stadium. Well, enough of my blabbering for right now. Let's listen to the highlights of the game. As always, proudly presented to you by the UB Bulls Football Network. And it was the Bulls who struck first on a Mike Washington touchdown run to open the scoring in this conference showdown. So UB driving here. They're right on the doorstep on this first and goal from the Miami two-yard line. They're going to go with Snyder under center, two receivers to the left. The snap, handoff up the middle. It's Washington taking it across the goal line into the end zone. Touchdown, UB. And just like that, your Buffalo Bulls strike first in this big Mackey showdown. Buffalo 6, Red Hawks no score. However, Miami was able to tie the score. Avion Smith, the starting quarterback, is Gabbert. The normal starter, once again, could not play for Miami of Ohio. So Smith, a 73-yard quarterback scramble for a touchdown, tied it up at seven. But worry not, UB fans, your Bulls had an answer. Jamin Muse with a very impressive pickoff of Miami and quarterback Smith. 
and that set UB up at the two-yard line where they had a gutsy call. They couldn't get it in for the first couple of attempts, but on fourth and goal, opted to go for it, and this is how it turned out. Fourth down and goal for UB, tied at seven, 10.53 to go first half, and the Bulls are gonna go for it. Snyder gonna go out of the shotgun max protect, one running back off either side, one receiver to the left of the line. Goal line defense for Miami of Ohio. The snap, Snyder fakes to give. Kiso's nice cut to the far side. He will walk it on in to the end zone. Touchdown balls. So the decision to go for it pays off. And just like that, with 10.50 to go in the first half, you be back in front. It's the Bulls 13 and the Red Hawks 7. So again, a very gutsy decision that paid off for head coach Maurice Lindquist and the UB Bulls. But Miami, Ohio, give them credit. They came to play. They knew what was on the line as well. And they answered back not only with a field goal, but a go-ahead score and had a 20-17 lead heading to the fourth and final quarter of play. And things seemed to be looking bleak for UB. They really didn't do much on offense, especially in the third quarter. But... That's why they say you got to play the full four quarters. And with 30 seconds left, UB had a fourth down deep in Miami, Ohio territory, and everything was set up. They were going to take the field goal, go to overtime on a fourth and four, chip shot field goal, McNulty. It was all set, right? Well, Miami, Ohio had different plans. They jumped offside, and those five yards ended up giving UB enough for a first down with 30 seconds left. So they didn't need the game tying field goal. As a result of that penalty kept the drive alive and listen to what happened on the very next play. So after that monumental error by Miami, Ohio Red Hawks, that penalty, the offsides on the field goal try by McNulty. UB gets a set of fresh downs, first and 10 from the Miami 15 yard line, 31 seconds to play in the game. Ball on the left hash. They're gonna go with Schneider shotgun mode. Three receivers right, one wide left. Running back Washington on the left shoulder of Snyder. Four down lineman for the Red Hawks. 31 seconds left to go in the game. 20 to 17 Red Hawks to score. UB from left to right. The snap. Snyder fades, pumps, airs it near side. Got a man. Marshall wide open. Connects in the end zone. Touchdown, UB. And with 30 seconds left, your Buffalo Bulls have come back and take the lead 23-20. Now that, folks, is a wide receiver taking a cornerback to school. He just made a dazzling move, did Marshall, towards that near side back right corner of the end zone. Wide open, and Snyder hit him right between the numbers, floated it in with a beautiful rainbow pass, and with 30 seconds left, your UB Bulls are 30 seconds away from a huge conference and divisional win, now up 23-20 over Miami, Ohio with 30 seconds left. What a pass and what a huge drive by the UB Bulls and Cole Snyder. And as always, we hope you enjoyed those post-game highlights and highlights during the game. Proudly presented to you by the UB Bulls Football Network. Now, you know the drill, as we always like to do before we wrap things up here on the post-game. We first want to take you around the MAC and then preview the next game. But we'll start by looking around the MAC East and the MAC. Eastern Michigan pulling off a 20-13 win against UMass. UB will see the Minutemen in a couple weeks here on the road following their contest of Mullen Green. They then go to play UMass. Ball State coming away with a 44-38 double overtime victory over Northern Illinois. 
Toledo beating Central Michigan 38-17. And boy, has the season really gotten away from the Chippewas because Central Michigan put up 44 points against Oklahoma State to open the season. But it has absolutely come apart at the seams for them. They are now 1-4 on the season. Bowling Green, who is UB's next opponent, 31-28 victory over Akron. It was Kent State in a thriller in the Mackeys, beating Ohio 31-24 in overtime. And Western Michigan absolutely smacking New Hampshire around the field, 44-7, the final score. So let's talk about Bowling Green. That is next up for your UB Bulls as they will take to the road once again. To Doit L. Perry Stadium they go to take on the Falcons. And for Bowling Green, they come in with the same record, 2-3. and three. They had a big win a couple weeks ago against Marshall. They are 1-0 and oh in the MAC. And the big thing for Bowling Green got that 31-28 victory over the Akron Zips. The big key for UB, it's going to be containing the quarterback. Unlike Miami, Ohio, that had a start. The backup, well, that's not going to be the case for the Falcons. Matt McDonald, he had three touchdowns and threw for 247 yards in the home win over Akron. Now, despite that great performance, in all reality, it still is a one-possession game, but you know that crowd's going to be fired up. It's going to be another test just like this week. And I think for UB, there's a lot of good things in this game against Miami, Ohio you can take in the next week. You know, being more aggressive on fourth down, being more aggressive in the play calling in general, and really just being able to see the ground game get more established, I think that's going to be important. And then it's going to come down to Cole Snyder. He's going to have to make some plays with his arm because you know that Matt McDonald can do it on the other side for Bowling Green, and it should be a very fun offensive shootout in another Mac East clash. So that will be next Saturday, and that is when we'll talk with you next, as that's the preview of the next game. So that's going to finish things up here on this edition of Bullseye Nation, the UB Bulls postgame podcast. My name is John Caruba. One more time for everybody here at UB Stadium, I'm John Caruba. The Bulls coming away with the last-second victory, pulling victory from the jaws of defeat, winning 24-20 over the Miami, Ohio University Redhawks. Celebrate, Bulls fans. Your team now 2-0 in the MAC East and now on a critical head-to-head tiebreaker over the Redhawks. Until next Saturday, John Kruba signing off. Thank you for listening, and as always, go UB Bulls go. What a win. Good night, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to this edition of Bullseye Nation, University of Buffalo Bulls postgame podcast. Tune in next week for another exciting installment involving all things Buffalo Bulls. Until then, thanks for listening, and we will see you again next time.